Hey everyone, it's Patch 3.23 Affliction, and today I want to talk about what I think is going to be the best week one strategy for most people's leak starts. Today we're going to be talking about Wandering Path Red Altars with Harvest and Expedition. This is going to be effectively an Alk and Go strategy where you're going to rush through a map as fast as possible, and you're going to walk out with quite a lot of different currency, which should feel really, really good to do, and it should provide you with quite a lot of profit. Now, before we go any further, we should talk about which map you actually want to run this on. Ideally, you're going to be doing this strategy on Jungle Valley, which is a map that is coming back into the map pool for Affliction. The one thing I cannot tell you, and this will be something I will update the description of the video and I will have a pinned comment for as soon as we know the information, is that I do not know what tier Jungle Valley is going to naturally be. The reason this matters and the reason we want to do Jungle Valley is because the boss doesn't technically exist. And because the boss doesn't exist, that means all the altars that you get while you're clearing the map cannot possibly affect the boss. So you'll only get altars that affect either the map as a whole or specifically for Eldritch Monsters. This is going to overall increase your profit by quite a bit. And the fact that Jungle Valley is a really nice and linear map makes it a perfect place to target farm the strategy until you get bored of it. Now, as I mentioned, we will not know what natural tier Jungle Valley is going to be until a day or two before the release of Affliction. That is information that is typically released with all the loot filter information. And as soon as we know that, I will update the description and I'll update the pin comment. The reason this matters is because if Jungle Valley is not a tier 12 or higher map, that means we are going to need three watch zones to turn into a tier 16 map and potentially four watch zones if it's one of the first maps on the map device. Ideally, it's going to be a tier 12 or higher map, which means that all you're going to have to do is hearing Exarch and Eater Worlds, air two watch zones, and then you'll be ready to farm the strategy. If it does end up being a tier 11 or lower, that means you'll either have to kill Uber, Elder, or Maven to be able to start the strategy. If that's the case, I would highly recommend to just buy a carry for maybe 50, 60 chaos, depending on how much it is in the first few days of the league. Get your third watch zone and potentially your fourth watch zone if you need it, and then get to farming as no map will be as efficient as Jungle Valley. You could do this on other maps such as Strands, but it'll be a decent amount less money per hour than you would be able to get on Jungle Valley. Lastly, another map for consideration is City Square. If you are a City Square enjoyer, feel free to do a strategy on City Square and it'll work just fine. But if you're sick and tired of City Square and if you want something different, Jungle Valley is a good alternative. But if you do not want to go get your third watch zone, and if Jungle Valley is a tier 11 or lower map, City Square should be an alternative, assuming it is a tier 12 or higher map, as it will also potentially have the same problem. We just need these maps to be tier 16. So let's talk about the Atlas tree and how you would be setting this up. So in the description, there are going to be two POE planner links. The first one is going to be for this setup. And the second one is going to be for the actual farming strategy itself. The reason we want to look at this setup first is because we want to rush the tier 16 maps as fast as possible. And this setup with Wandering Path and a 100% chance for one monster to drop a connected map is the absolute fastest way to actually get there. The way you're going to be putting this together on League Launch is quite simple. You're going to be going through the middle and you're just simply going to be pathing through the crack nodes all the way up to Wondering Path. We are just straight up rushing this. After this, all you have to do is just go through and pick up some of the adjacent map drop chance nodes that are around the start of the Atlas tree. The way you're going to actually be playing this on League Launch is really simple. You're going to go to Karak as soon as you finish Act 10 and you're going to open a shop and you're going to buy one copy of each map that you do not have completion for. This should get you somewhere around four or five maps and you're just simply going to run them one at a time and then hopefully in those maps, you're going to get other maps that you have not completed yet. You never want to run a map that you already have completion for again, as that is just a waste of time. As soon as you run out of new maps to do that won't give you another Atlas point, you are then going to go to Karak and do a Karak mission. This Karak mission hopefully will have a map that you don't have completion for. And as soon as you finish the map, even if you had to pick a map that you don't get completion for, his shop will reset. And hopefully in his shop, there will be more new maps for you to buy that you have not had completion for. You're then going to just rinse and repeat this process until you hit tier 16. There could be a very small chance that you might actually get in a position where you do not have any new maps to do and you have no new Karak missions, but that chance is extremely slim and that should not happen for basically anyone. You should be able to do a new map, every single map until you have full completion. And this should only take you a few hours to do if you have a very fast build. As soon as you have killed Eater of Worlds 
in Searing Exarch and you have the majority of your points, it's time to do the strategy. All you're going to have to do is you're going to go to the start of the tree and you're going to be respecting all the points on the left that we picked for the adjacent map drop chance as we don't need them anymore. This strategy is going to focus on three things. It's going to be focusing on expedition, it's going to be focused on harvest, and it's going to be focused on red altars. So why don't we start with how you'd path this tree at the start, and then we'll talk about all the extra nodes they can pick up that are not essential. So we're going to start by pathing to the right and picking up the expedition nodes over here. These are amazing nodes and they give you quite a lot of additional chance for an expedition. The same goes for the harvest nodes up here. There's just 30% chance for additional harvest. Next up, you're going to be picking up all the harvest nodes on the big wheel and you're picking up all the expedition nodes on the big wheel as well. I have done a few hundred expeditions last season as my league start money making plan and I absolutely loved extreme archaeology. I would say there was maybe one or two cases where I had to place a bad explosion because the remnants were in the way. But typically the one big explosion, not only is it going to be more efficient, not only is it going to give you more loot, but it's also just going to be substantially faster. And the nice thing is we can pick up the two points on the right, which give us quite a lot of explosive placement range, meaning we can steer around any bad remnants fairly easily. One thing to note about extreme archaeology is once you place it down before you explode it, there'll be a little expedition icon by your skills, which you can hover over to see all the remnants that it's actually currently hitting. So that will be a very easy way for you to check if you are potentially hitting a bad remnant or not. Moving on, we're going to be picking up stream of consciousness. Since we're not going to be using any sort of garab or sextants in this plan, we're simply going to be out and going. So just having an additional chance for extra content is going to be great. That means we're going to see more expeditions and more harvests. Then we're going to be moving on to the harvest nodes and we're picking up all of the increased quant of life force while pathing over to the right side of the tree and picking up all the expedition nodes over here along with the harvest nodes down here. Now, one thing to note about these harvest nodes, I cannot tell you which ones you should pick ahead of time. Prices of life force, especially the first few days can fluctuate, but typically what I can tell you is that purple life force is typically worth the most, meaning we want to pick up the two small yellow and two small blue plant nodes to give us substantially more purple essence. This is something you're going to have to you look at on trade and you're going to want to see what the current price of life force is and for example if yellow life force ends up actually being more expensive between the three you'll want to take out the yellow points and instead pick up the purple points to get more yellow plants overall moving on to the rest of the tree we're going to be pathing over to the middle of the tree and of course we're going to be picking up wandering path that's going to be essential to this whole strategy we're then going to go over to the middle of the middle wheel and we're going to pick up all the expedition nodes here and all the harvest nodes here in total we're going to have a 72 percent chance for an expedition per map and that is before including stream of consciousness in there as well. And we're going to have a 60% chance to see a sacred grove per map, which means you effectively are guaranteed either at least a sacred grove or an expedition per map. And you have a fairly high chance to see both at the same time. The last thing we want to do is we want to path through all of the map modifier effect nodes at the top of the tree all the way over to red altars. Now, if you don't have enough points to make all this work, another option could be to pick up the two gateways and get over here that way. But that still doesn't exclude you from picking up as many map modifiers effect nodes as you can as these are extremely powerful and you basically want the both slants in any single farming strategy period we're going to be picking up red altars since red altars effectively make as much money as blue altars do they are very very close to each other in terms of currency generation per map and red altars in my opinion just feel a lot better you get to see a lot more loot in each map and a lot of people generally prefer these over blue altars because you don't have to wait for the little animation of the blue enemies before you can actually attack them. For the rest of the tree, I try to make this tree for what I would expect you to have in terms of points, assuming you finished all the maps and did about half of the unique maps. This is not going to have all the points because this is going to assume you aren't going to do any of the maven challenges to get those points. But what we could do with the remaining 20 or 30 or so points that you would have if you got all of your map completion done is we are going to be picking up ambush. Ambush is going to feel really good for the next season because Ambush is going to be on the map device permanently. They can pay four chaos to get three strong boxes in each of your maps. And that is going to pair really well with all the small nodes on the tree with Wondering Pack. So all the nodes down here are going to give us 30% increased chance for an additional pack of monsters, which means we're going to get quite a lot of extra monsters in each map. Then we're going to be going over here to get an additional 12% chance to get to open our strong boxes again. And then lastly, we're going to be picking up the top and bottom portions of the strong box node up here as we want more Arcanist strong boxes, which just give us currency and more diviners, which give us cards. We do not want the middle path as cartographers are substantially weaker than the other two. And this would just overall reduce how many of the good strong boxes we were going to actually get. Lastly, 
you should have a few points left over. And what you could do with those points is pick up all of the shrine nodes. This is personally what I like to do as it'll just make you map a little bit faster and it'll make you tankier. Even if you have a build that doesn't really like the accelerating shrine or doesn't really benefit from the Spellico shrine, picking up the shrine nodes over here, the ones in the middle of the tree, and the ones at the top of the tree are just going to give you a lot of shrines per map, which means you'll basically always have an acceleration shrine or one of the defense shrines that increases your stats by quite a bit. You can opt to just not bother with these, and that means you'll only need 117 points to start this. But if you do go and get all of your map completion before you do start a strategy, like most people typically do, that's where I would put those points. Next up, let's talk about how you're going to be setting up these maps, and then we'll talk about how you're going to be running them. So setting up the maps is going to be very simple. You're going to want to chisel all of your maps as chiseling is going to give you a substantially more quantity and there's no reason not to. And I would very much recommend to buy chisels from other people if you do run out of chisels while mapping as you sometimes will not be able to sustain them. Next, you're just going to elk them. All we're going to be doing with these maps is just doing a elk and go strategy. Now, what I would recommend to do is once you have a bigger stack of these maps is to put them in a stash tab like this. Just chisel them, elk them without looking at any of them. Then just coming over to this website, which will be linked in description below, poe.re. And what you could do here is you can set up a filter for all the mods that you want. So for example, here's a filter of all the mods that I don't want to do in this build. All I then have to do is click copy and then come back in game and just simply paste it in the search function for this tab. And then as you can see, everything that is highlighted means this is a map that's ready to go that doesn't have a bad mod on it that I don't want to do. Everything that isn't highlighted means it has a mod that I chose to exclude from the mods on the website. So all that means is these maps would be ready to go so I can take them and start running them. And then these maps would just simply have to be rerolled to potentially get something good. In terms of how we're going to be running the maps themselves, it's going to be very simple. We're just going to put our map into the device. And because we're running Shima Consciousness, there's not going to be anything special that we add to them other than simply scrolling down and finding Ambush. And we're going to be putting Ambush on every single one of our maps. And we're going to be turning on Searing Exarch for every single one of these maps. Now, in terms of running the maps, it's going to be very simple. If you are doing City Square, you want to go rush to the boss ASAP. That is going to then remove all of the boss related altars out of the pool of altars that can spawn. And then you simply can just clear the map as normal. If you're doing Jungle Valley, you don't have to do that. And for Jungle Valley, you just simply clear at your own leisure and just slowly make your way through the whole map. Now, because this is going to be red altars instead of blue altars, you are not going to have to skip your expeditions and your harvests and wait for any sort of quantity from altars. You're free to do your expedition, your harvest as soon as you see them. Now, red altars can sometimes have quantity on them, but it's very rare. So I wouldn't really hold my breath for it. And I wouldn't really wait to see what happens in the rest of the map. I would just simply immediately click on the altars as you get them and do your lead mechanics as soon as you see them. In terms of what to pick for your red altars, the options are quite simple. If you see anything that gives you awakened sex anything that gives you gilded scarabs or anything that gives you any sort of rock currency, you want to pick that over anything else. The Awakened Sextants are going to be a very, very large portion of your profit here as Awakened Sextants typically go for a very large amount of money due to the Sextant rolling craze that has been happening recently over the past few leagues. Another really strong option, which I would recommend to pick over most other options at the start, is going to be anything that gives you Eldritch Currency. That means if you see anything that says lesser ember, uh, embers or greater embers or grand embers, you're going to want to pick those over anything else because those on League Launch are worth a very, very large amount of money. And they should be the second most profitable thing that you find next to your Awakened Sextants from the altars. While doing this, you should be able to get quite a large amount of excess maps. And the nice thing about this is, especially if you're going to rush your strategy in the first few days of the season, is that you're going to be able to sell these maps for quite a large amount of profit. Typically on day one, tier 16 maps tend to go for 10 to 15 chaos each. And even a day or two afterwards, you can still expect anywhere between five, six, seven chaos per tier 16 map, which can add quite a lot of profit, especially if you're doing City Square or Jungle Valley, as there'll be people who want to buy those maps to run them for themselves and their strategies as those are going to be very popular maps throughout the whole of next season. In terms of profits, I am not going to be able to tell you an exact profit per hour as prices change day by day at the start of the league, but we can expect this to be a decent amount of div per hour no matter what. But at the end of the day, it's going to depend on how fast you can clear the maps. If you have a build that basically needs nothing to work and you can do tier 16 maps like scraps of paper, you're going to be able to make a lot of money at the start of the league because you won't have to wait for gear. If you have builds that needs a little bit time to get going and maybe you're a little bit late to tier 16 map farming where you can't do them as fast your profits are going to be a little bit lower but overall 
selling off all the loots should be very easy as all you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the expedition currency for yourself to reroll the vendors. You can just sell all of your Gwen currency and not bother with Gwen. Personally, I really don't feel like Gwen is worth touching anymore, but all of your Danning and all of your Trujan currency, you should use yourself. Lastly, for ROG, if you don't want to do ROG crafting, which I would highly recommend to do, at least for the first day or two of the season, as that can make you a stupid amount of money, you can sell that to the people who do want that currency, as that currency will actually be in high demand for the first few days. Your Life Force, you can choose to hold on to it for maybe a day or two, as typically it goes up in price very quickly over day two and day three as people start crafting decent gear to put up for sale or you just sell it as you need to to be able to afford more upgrades. The large majority of the rest of the loot they're going to be finding in these maps is just going to be rock currency either in chaos orbs or awakened sections or scarabs or any other small amount of bubble currency and it should be very easy to sell it off whenever you want to liquidate to buy more upgrades. That's all I really have to say about the strategy. I feel like this is going to be amazing and this is most likely going to be what I'm going to be doing on League launch as well. And I feel like this is just going to be a very, very fun and very comfortable strategy, especially since we have Jungle Valley back in a rotation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the description below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. I also stream on Twitch every single day and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions there. Or if you just simply like to join us and have some fun, that would be wonderful. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.